Well, welcome to chapter three, uh, basic data structures. Here we're going to about linear structures. The whole chapter is about linear structures. We're going to cover stacks, queues, dequeues, and list, and we're going to see examples of each of them in use. Uh, while we're doing this, we'll learn more about our abstract data types, which are more examples of classes. So you should be, become more familiar with classes by the end of this. Uh, so first, a linear structure, we want to store a bunch of uh, references to objects or a bunch of numbers or a bunch of strings and there's a lot of ways of storing that in memory we're going to learn through this book you can use trees and graphs and all kinds of different structures uh, but there's one general category of structure called a linear structure here's a little picture of it you'll notice that there, it's a bunch of things in a row and so basically you can add items to a linear structure in different ways but once you add them they retain the relation to the neighbors that doesn't change. So if I add something in between these two, between B and M, it'll have a relationship that B will come before it and M will come after it. Uh, so linear structures always have that relationship. What difference between the different types is where and when you can remove items. So in other words, once an item is added, it stays in that position relative to the other items that came before it and came after it. Uh, I, I like to think of a line of cars and a line that follow rules that once in the line they cannot pass another car to change places and when they can leave and join the line depends on the rules of a particular data structure. Uh, the first data structure we're gonna, of this type that we're going to study is called a stack and they always give you a stack of plates as an example. Uh, so when you stack plates you always have to first put the first plate in and this is called the base. Then you put the next plate in, it always goes on top of the stack that's already there. So you can only put plates on top. And then if you want to get to a plate here uh, without unbalancing the stack, you have to remove all the plates starting at the stop to take each one off until you get to the one you want. So this is the essence of a stack. Here's a picture of it. Uh, so a lot of times we'll, stack, we'll think of stack as vertical where this is the base. And these are the operations that a stack has. We're going to learn that these operations form the method or the interface for the abstract data type for stack. So however we implement a stack, this will, they'll always have these six operations. So the first operation is just to create a new stack. So that's uh, creating an object of type stack. So we just say stack parentheses parentheses. It returns a reference. We can store it in a variable. Uh, you can get the size of the stack by once you have that variable that variable dot size. Uh, you can push an item on the stack, so you say the name of the stack dot push, and you give it an item in parentheses, and it puts it onto the top of the stack. You can say pop an item from the stack, that removes the top item of the stack, so this item would be removed from the stack and you would be, it would be returned by pop, so you could do something with it. There's also a peek, which allows you to get a reference to what's on the top of the stack to look at it, but it doesn't remove it from the top. And then finally there's is empty, which will test if uh, the stack has zero items. So it returns true if it's empty. Here's a, an example of a Python stack. So you have the base, and you have the stack. Uh, Python stacks, you can have mixed data types. So I have a, a number, a string, a boolean, and a float all on this stack. Uh, one of the major features of stacks is called that they're last in, first out. So if I'm putting things on the stack, I put in four first, and then I put in dog, and you see as I stack them, they're like the plates going on top of each other. Then I put in true, and last I put in 8.4. Now when I remove them, the last in, which was the 8.4, is the first one out. That's what LIFO or LIFO means. So this is a LIFO structure, which is always associated with a stack. And so the first thing I pull out would be the 8.4, and the next thing I pull out would be the true, and then dog, and then four. And you'll notice that the order we put them in, going from four to 8.4, when we pull them out, they actually go from 8.4, they go the other way. So they go 8.4 comes out first, then true, then dog, then four. So this is actually in reversed order. And so one of the things that stacks are very good for is reversing the order of a bunch of items. So if you have a list of items, it'll reverse it all. 
Uh, it's also good for matching up nested structures, and we're going to study a few of those, but one of them will be parentheses. So whenever you have a, a for every pair of things, so every left parentheses, you have a matching right parentheses, and you want rules that they want to be balanced, uh, this will match that up. So here's the actual definition of the methods that we're going to define in a stack class. So when you make objects of type stack, they will have exactly these methods. So this is called the stack abstract data type. Abstract data type presents this interface uh, which is abstract because we don't know how it's going to be imp implemented. In fact, we're going to see we can implement it in different ways. We're going to show two ways, and I'll mention a third. Uh, so stack just creates an empty stack and returns a reference, and then you use that reference dot all of these other methods to invoke the method, just like we did in fraction. So push uh, would push a new item on. Pop removes an item and returns it. Peek looks at the item. Uh, is empty returns true or false, and it returns true if it's empty. Size returns how many items are on the stack. So here's uh, an example that's in the book. So we create a new stack, so we store that in S. So the stack now contains nothing. Uh, then we say is empty, and it returns a true. Then we push 4 onto the stack, and after we've done that, the stack has a 4 on it. And then we push dog on the stack, and you'll see now it has two things on it. Now in this type of, of reference here, uh, you can see the right hand side is the top of the stack. Uh, we can peek at the stack, so it returns dog, but it doesn't modify the stack. We can push true on the stack. Uh, we can get the size, so that will return three. We can ask is it empty, it's not empty, so it returns false. Then we can push uh, float under the stack, so now the stack has four items. Uh, we can pop the float, so the stack the 8.4 goes away, so we're back to three items, and it returns 8.4. Uh, we can pop another item, so it returns the true, and then you just have four and dog. And then finally, we can get the size, and it's two. So this will give you an idea of how the stack works. These are using all the operators that we have for a stack.